which brings us back to the original ancestor. Now here's what you got. Chromosomes are composed of what they call nucleic proteins. That's what they're after. These proteins are formed by what they call a poly, you understand that, that's many, polypeptic chain of amino acids. So what they're working for right now is to manufacture those in order to produce those. That's the suit the fellas messing with down at the biological lab. If you're way out in Star Wars and Star Trek, eventually you want to get the genes and chromosomes with the, plant, with the plants, animals, and men mixed. This gives you a man walking like this through Star Wars and right behind him an animal that looks like a man and walks like a man and then right behind him a machine that walks and looks like a man and then right behind him a genuine slot machine, a fire plug coming along behind him. That's Star Wars. And that's an evolutionary shot where you try to link the computer with the genes. Now that's the acme of the college education these days they're working on. All right, now the amino acids are called, these are called this. They're called biomonomers. Biomonomers. And in order to make a chain of these things, you have to have other biomonomers. You have to have amino acid here, an enzyme here, some sugar here, some other stuff here, porphyrins, to get that chain out like that. There's amino acid here, here's some here, here's some here, and this thing is laid out. When all these biomonomers are strung together, they form what you call a macromolecule, like that. They sure make you pay tuition, don't they? We thought they said, well, you put A and B together and C and D together, and, and then you get uh, a flibble flabble. I'd be a lot remember, easy to remember this other stuff. Oh, right, now these here get together, and they form the protein. Here's how the protein forms. Here's a gene sitting over here like this. And this has what they call a protein mantle. That the thing is, <laughs> it's already come out of something that's alive. The way you go back, way back there and get life out of nothing is you pretend the conditions were different then than they are now. However, then you pop right up and say, well, right now things are evolving. Which means conditions are now like they were then. But then you say, no, we're back there at the beginning it was different, see? And then you guess how it was. There isn't one evidence of scientific fact anywhere in the operation. You guess. I'm talking about how it is right now. Right now, the gene has a protein mantle that comes from something living. It connects with enzymes. It has a DNA molecule in it. That's a form of acid. That sends out to a thing over here called a cytoplasm. It sends them a message. Messengera. You can't even say message in this in this racket. <laughs> and when it gets over here and gets to the cytoplasm, you have some things in here called ribosomes. And they look like this in the diagrams. And these things here, these biomonomers and acids, are in the cytoplasm here, and these ribosomes determine how they're going to get together and assemble together to form the nucleic protein over here on this side. This is in the chromosome. This is the stuff that goes on in biochemistry. This is the big uh, voodoo act. Now. When you get your amino acids together, you haven't even started. You've got to get enzymes, some living material in there. You've got to get that stuff to come over here and something to tell it how to straighten out when it gets there so when it comes over here, it's in the right order. Can you imagine that happening by accident? If it did happen by accident, let me show you the final stew that you get into. You get into this. Miller and Oprion prove the essential amino acids building blocks for life. They dissolve in water and com can combine. Polypeptides produced by this condensation evaporation produce proteins similar to those of life. Not life. Similar to them. No life in them. All right. For these amino acids to get together over here, they have to have what they call correct chirality. All amino acids for all living protoplasm must have a chirality called labor rotary or dextral rotary. They sure make you pay for it, don't they? Couldn't the guy just said left-handed, right-handed or something help you out? 
You know what I'd do if I had the money and time and eyesight? I'd go back into college and rewrite all the textbooks so any fool can understand them. You know why those long words are used, those Latin and Greek words for all those phylum and subphylum? It's so you have to pay to learn them and make you look like a dumbbell if you don't know them. All right, now here's basically what's going on. Those amino acids, the carbon atoms in those acids have four valences as follows. A dextra rotary runs R, P, Q, B, S in the middle. Over here, this labored rotary runs P, R, Q, A, S in the middle. These are the same chemical structure, but not the same spatial structure. If you put that one on top of this one, the Q would be over the R. It wouldn't match. The R would be over the Q. It wouldn't match. And when those amino acids are formed, those carbon atoms have to go in there like a hand in glove. And it's like 50 right-handed gloves. This one goes in here, this one goes in the bottom, this one goes in the bottom, this goes in the bottom, and that strings that thing out. And before you get a living protein of amino acids that are real and not similar, you have to have all these uh, molecules here have to be labor rotary. The two figures are identical in chemical structure, but not a spatial structure. Chains of molecules cannot be made of these different structures. The chirality of the amino acid determines the properties of the resulting protein. Comes out over here. You get the wrong chirality in there, you don't get the protein over here. All right, from protein which do not fit in the metabolism of living organisms, they are often lethal. Protein chains of life are a hundred left-hand gloves fitting in each other. Nucleic acids are dextra rotary, wrong kind. Amino acids are lever rotary, right kind. The cells break down the wrong kind, dextra rotary, and rebuild them into laboratory, labor rotary, the right kind. The cells do that, but the cells are alive. Nothing inorganic can do it. Therefore, the only way you can produce life is with life. Therefore, if you're going to say we can judge the past by the present, you're telling us that accidentally, 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 this thing here took place, and that thing there took place at the start to produce living organisms. You know what the chance of that happening are accidentally, according to the fellows who spend time with it and work with it? The chance of that thing taking place are one out of 10 to 1,360. One out of 10 to about 1,360 zeros after it. Brethren, you know so? If you count 10 million electrons on the head of a pin, or 50 million, or 100 million, take your pick, give it to a few hundred million, it won't make any difference. There are not that many electrons in five universes the size of the known universe. You don't realize what a number that thing is. That's a 10 with 1,360 zeros after it. If your universe was 900 billion light years in all directions, that wouldn't use up one-tenth of the electrons in that number. You know what these fellows are telling you? They're telling you that when this thing started, your common ancestor, that thing occurred out of a hot earth coming out of the sun accidentally, accidentally, and took place into the complex thing that makes up the protein now, and the chances of that are so great that frankly, it's my personal opinion, frankly, I don't believe any man in his right mind would count such a thing for five minutes. I think a man that would buy a thing like that has something basically wrong upstairs. <laughs> and my reason for rejecting the theory of evolution has nothing to do basically with the Bible. 